Has there ever been a better time to build your own PC? I mean, it's gotten to the point where DIY enthusiasts have used the phrase Lego for adults to describe how simple it's become. But nonetheless, there are still quite a few common pitfalls that the novice builder, and even some experienced ones, still fall into. So what are a few things that merit a little extra attention when picking parts or during the building process itself to save you a ton of headaches down the line? Well, since part of the reason that building PCs is easier these days is because components are becoming more and more power efficient, we will start with a tip on power supplies. Don't cheap out on your power supply. And I, I don't mean avoid a well-rated power supply from a reputable manufacturer just because it's on sale. If you can find such a deal, go for it. What I'm talking about instead is finding out that your rig only needs 250 or 300 watts of power and deciding it's okay to go for some bargain basement unit with questionable packaging from a brand you've never heard of. Way too often, these are made with cheap, unreliable components that can't even deliver the amount of power advertised without failing, sparking, or even explode. If that happens, not only will you be out whatever you spent on the PSU, it could also damage whatever you have plugged into it, meaning hundreds of dollars down the drain. But let's say you've gotten a nicer power supply anyway because you want a multi-GPU setup and you've made sure that the motherboard you picked has enough PCI Express slots to support multiple cards. You should be ready to go, right? Wrong! If you're going with NVIDIA SLI, the motherboard needs an SLI certification. So unless it specifically indicates it's compatible with the level of SLI you desire, it probably isn't, even if it has multiple PCI Express slots. But if you're more of an AMD fan and you want Crossfire, things will be a little easier for you as Crossfire technology doesn't need anything other than the aforementioned PCI Express slots. So, You've got the right power supply and motherboard and are busying yourself getting everything installed in your case and suddenly you hear a clattering noise. One of those tiny screws has slipped off your screwdriver and is trapped somewhere in your case, possibly under the motherboard. If this happens, don't be tempted to just leave it there and deal with it later. Metal screws conduct electricity, so if they touch the traces on the underside of your motherboard, they can cause electrical shorts that could permanently fry your system. In fact, part of the reason we use motherboard standoffs is to keep those traces from touching the metal part of the case, which prevents electrical mishaps. So make sure you retrieve those loose screws before turning anything on. And by the way, yes, you can use a magnetic screwdriver to do this, as the magnetic force is not great enough to damage your components, even hard drives. Finally, to round things out, here's one from the simple thing that's easy to forget department. Screw in your graphics cards. Many GPUs, especially higher end models, are heavy enough to put a significant amount of torque on the PCI Express slot that they're plugged into. Fortunately, it's easy to avoid this simply by screwing the card bracket into your case, but this is very easy to overlook, which can actually lead to the card's weight ripping out the PCIe slot entirely. I have seen this. Damaging both the card and forcing you to buy a whole new motherboard, which has happened to people when their GPU popped out when they were trying to plug in a cable. Now, there are some motherboards on the market with reinforced PCIe slots to help keep this from happening, but those can be pretty expensive, so the best thing to do is just be mindful of these little details so your dream rig doesn't turn into a nightmare. So what are the, some of the things that you wish you had known before building your first PC? Let us know in the comments. I'd also like you guys to be sure to like those useful comments so that we build up a little repository of computer building tips below this video for people to check out. Also, let us know if you'd like to see more computer building mistakes to avoid videos like this one. Tunnel Bear VPN lets you tunnel to up 20 different countries allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as though you are in a different country. They have easy to use apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac. They also have a Chrome extension. And all you gotta do is choose a country in the app, 
turn the switch on Tunnel Bear and watch as your bear tunnels your internet connection to your new location, which does a couple of things. Number one, your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption. Encryption? Encryption, not encryption. It's the good kind of encryption. And two, your public IP address gets switched, so you show up as if you're from that other place. They also have a top-rated privacy policy, and they do not log user activity. You can try out Tunnel Bear VPN with 500 megs of free data and no credit card required at the link in the video description. And if you choose to get a year of unlimited data, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com slash Linus. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you want to check out our other channels, go ahead right there. We've got a featured video. It's going to be very good, I promise, unless it's bad, in which case I'm sorry. You can leave a comment with suggestions for future fastest possibles. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and all that good stuff.